Oh my god, I just read what you said, Tess. You gonna go beat a Canadian with a sock? Pull of butter? In honor of Gator! Well, at least their skin would be moisturized. They probably don't put lotion on. COVID fucked up a lot of shit, but it's still no excuse on the lack of exclusives or quality games. It's either live series games, like online service games, or games with great graphics, of which shitty mechanics and weak story. I absolutely agree. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're gonna actually look at this game. All right, this YouTube video, right? This YouTube video is, you can't see it. It says, what happened to the ninth generation? It's pretty much console games. That's pretty much what we're gonna be watching. Yeah, we're gonna watch this video on these bad companies not making good games and whining about it. Oh man, it's so hard to make a good game nowadays. How, oh yeah? Oh yeah? How about you go read a book, huh? Why are these writers out here making bangers? How about you go read a book, huh? Learn from them and then, and then come back and make a good game, okay? How about that? How about you hire one? All right, let's get into it. And we've designed the most consistently powerful next generation console. And we've built state of the art platform technology to allow- Mom, I can't read. <laughs> I can't read. I need help. Uh, did you drink my Alani today? Oh yeah, my favorite, my favorite woman that I look up to, um, that I look forward to drinking every day. That gives me life and soul. Alani, please sponsor me. Allow every developer to realize their full vision. Where are the are games you at? Where are the games? Where are the games? It's oh, you dry. saw this uh, yesterday? Nice. Oh, wait. Let me turn off my music. Love the energy. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. I don't know where this energy is coming from because my ass went to bed at fucking... My be my ass went to bed at 4 a.m. Probably like 4.30 because, yeah... And then I woke up at 7, 7 a.m. So I don't know. I don't know where this, uh, I don't know where this energy is coming from. But I tell you, uh, uh, I'm going to feel it. <laughs> I'm going to feel it later on. <laughs> Once I turn it off, it's like, all right, shutting down. Okay. Anyways. Where are the games? Uh, I kind of keep Where waiting the for them games? to do their thing. I don't see anything. These are easily the most pointless upgrades I've ever experienced. What is the point of buying a console if you can just make a PC? If you're going to have everything on a PC, why not that. just buy a PC and have been console? Where are the games? Where are the deadlines? That. Where are the projects? Where are the teases? Like, it feels weird that it's like, why buy consoles? Why? Now comes the fun part. We can see how the develop Except a switch so we can play Overcooked and um Super Super Mario Party and then Super Mario Kart and Super uh Mario and then uh, uh Luigi and then uh 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 Mario lost his girl again so we got to go save Peach and then yo know, we oh we can't forget about about the Pokémon's the Pokemons, we got we got the Pokemons, and you know, we got we gotta catch them all. And then and then after that, um I think that's it. Oh, oh, oh yeah! Uh Legends of Zelda. Oh yeah, we got a we got we got the little boomerang thing. We got the little boomerang and uh uh the green hat. 
that could questionably be. I wonder if he works at the North Pole. Does that mean he's an elf that ran away from the South Pole from Santa because of the labor laws? <laughs> Great ass boomerangs. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> nah, look, no, we all love some Mario Part, uh, Mario Kart for sure, for sure, for sure. <clears throat> all right, okay, okay. I'm sorry. That was. I'm sorry. That was. Open my brain. community takes advantage of that feature set. Something's happening with video game consoles. They've changed from machines people couldn't wait to get their hands on to machines people couldn't wait to forget. And after weeks of digging, I boiled down every problem the ninth generation has down to three. So let's break them down, starting with the most obvious of them all, the games. You see, every console generation is measured by one thing and one thing only the games. The 360 had Halo 3, the PlayStation 3 had Uncharted, and the Wii had the Wii Sports tennis game that broke all of our TVs. <laughs> but unlike the previous generations, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X technically have way more games than any other console in history. Every week a Wait. new indie game release. What? No way. Releases, there's backwards compatibility for almost any game that you can think of, and if God forbid those older games didn't play well, well then there's a pretty good chance it's been completely remade. So oh, actually, uh, I'm gonna be brave enough to play uh, Dead Space with Toxic at some point, so look forward to that. I'm just saying. Shout out to th thank you uh, for the remake, though. Thank thank you for the better graphics, because I, I wouldn't have done it. So I I, I do appreciate that. Thank you. So then why does this generation feel like it has nothing? How does that make any sense? Well, the answer starts getting more clear when we look at every hit this generation's had so far. There's a problem. Do you see it? Hold on. Let me remove every game that was made primarily for the previous generation. Now let's remove every game that's considered a better playing experience on the PC. And last but not least, let's remove every remake or remaster of an existing game. The list is dramatically smaller, isn't it? I mean, if these games tell us anything, it's that there's something in the water at Insomniac and we gotta protect them at all costs. They love me. But this generation's games are actually <laughs> a bigger problem than you'd think when we compare them to the previous generations, specifically the Xbox 360, PS3, and Wii generation. For context, the seventh generation of consoles objectively had worse development tools, worse hardware to build games on, less people with skills to build them, and less documentation to learn from. I mean, these consoles released before social media was even Wait. Does this person bring a cat into the store? On less people with skills to build them and less time. It's a cat! Uh, it's a cat! The shark! It's so cute! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry documentation Look to learn that. from. I mean, these consoles released before social media was even a thing. Yeah, here's the games they released okay, during sorry. the same amount of time as the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Oh. pretty wild, right? You see, back then, every game was made solely for that generation of consoles without remakes, and you could forget about a PC port back then. I mean, that just wasn't a thing. Because during that time, Steam is just getting started, Blizzard makes like one game every decade, and Microsoft is pushing the insanely buggy games for Windows Live. Uh. Look, these games <laughs> technically aren't telling you the full story. While most of these games are critically acclaimed, it's yeah, what I they did. did for the industry that made the seventh generation so special. For example, Gears of War revolutionized third-person color shooters, cooperative story, cat. and the yep. brown color palette that every game used for a lot longer than they should have. We sports. Re um, I spent endless nights doing this playing this game. This was me. 
brown color palette that every game used for a lot longer than they should have. This was me late nights. I ain't gonna lie. Good times, good times. Good Wii times, Sports good revolutionized times. motion controls made accessible for a brand new casual audience. Technically because of the Wii, anyone could play games now. Rest in peace to all the TVs out there. And back then, Call of Duty actually revolutionized FPS controls, multiplayer progression, and 60 frames per second as a staple of competitive multiplayer. 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. But what's more insane is that the publishers that absolutely dominated in the seventh generation have Ubisoft. completely bombed in this generation. Next generation gaming! Warner Brothers was on top of the world with Batman and Shadow oh, yeah. Mulder, but then oh, they yeah. released Suicide Squad, a game that nobody wanted. How you feel? Toxic. Do you hear that? Let's replay it. Warner Brothers was on top of the world with Batman and Shadow of Mordor, but then they released Suicide Squad, a game that nobody wanted. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody wanted to play this game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. How you feeling, Floyd? Ready to kick your ass? Nobody. Ubisoft dominates with Assassin's Creed, but then launches their quadruple-A game, Skull and Bones, to crickets. Like, that game came out two months ago, and no one's talking about it. It's already probably half off. Activision revolutionized multiplayer gaming with Call of Duty, a grounded military game, but now this is Call of Duty. You could be the king, but watch the queen. Oh, yeah. Nick Minaj. Why is Nicki Minaj in Call of Duty? For real, the for real. Game. Money. Also, for real. I was like, wait, is that for, like, is that serious? Are we, are we, are, is that serious? Are, we, are you guys being for all Nick Minaj? Like, I, that must be a meme. Like, that must, like, that must be AI. That must be, no, she's actually in the game. Nicki Minaj needed to be in Fortnite. Let's be, let's be for real. Where, where was that? Oh, they didn't want her. Nikki and Fortnite. I don't know. Yeah, the random celebs in Call of Duty is ridiculous. When I got killed by her, I was like, I got killed by a bad bitch. Where, where's my, where's my goddamn crickets? Oh, Microsoft, you know, the single biggest video game publisher in the world right now? Well, they launched Redfall completely broken, Starfield completely empty, Lionhead Studios completely fired, laid off four more companies during the making of this video. You what? And released three buggy incomplete Halo games in a row. <laughs> and they all hurt. Every single one of them hurt me. <laughs> Quite significantly. <laughs> so here's the million dollar question, if not billion dollars. What the heck oh, is happening really? with video games? You yeah. see the simple answer that yeah, gains yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of social credit these days is making games is hard. Making games is hard. Making games is hard. Making games is hard. hard. Making games is hard. <laughs> making games is hard. Yeah. hard. Using my personal experience in the software development field, I've been doing it for like 10 years, I can't argue that the process is difficult. But I can argue that these companies seem to have no idea what people actually want to play. And when we look at the games through that lens, we can start to see why we're getting so many remakes of games that were so successful yeah. before, so many live service Destiny or Fortnite clones, and why so many games are made for the previous generation with a higher install base first instead of the new consoles we spent $600 of our hard-earned Canadian money on. They weren't cheap, guys. Maybe we start building for them. Just a... 
<laughs> throwing that out there. <laughs> now, it might be because I love video games or because I'm Canadian and thus genetically predisposed to helping people come back stronger. That's that Zenkai in me, baby. So video game companies, here's some feedback that I'll give you free of charge. Ditch these consoles. No one thought the Xbox One was gonna make it two years, let alone 11. Just take it out back to the farm, make it look at the sunset, do what you need to do. We're all... <laughs> Take it in the back. Oh, nobody need to know. <laughs> let's let's have a little ceremony, pray over it, and, and dig it, and put it put it on the ground. Yeah. Oh, what your your pet PlayStation died. Oh, it's okay, Johnny. It's okay. It's okay. Meanwhile, like. <laughs> You took the power supply out the whole, a long time ago. <laughs> what? It died? Oh, no. Oh, my God. We, we have to bury it in the back. Oh, yeah. Let's have a funeral. Yeah. Let's. Oh, you're sad. It's okay. You, we can move on. <laughs> oh, my God. This is a W video. W, W, W. On the same page. No one's gonna be there and gonna be like, No, please, no, not the Xbox One and PS4. No, I love them so much. 11. Wait, just wait, wait. You guys can't see it. Wait, no. There we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm in a different corner. Take it out back to the farm, make it look at the sunset, <laughs> do what you need to do. We're all on the same page. No one's gonna be there and gonna be like, No, please, no. Bring him to the farm. You see, it's time to make games that people actually want. We're talking a non-live service Batman game, an Assassin's yeah! Creed Black Flag 2, an actually good Halo game. He's fun, I like him. Or just look at what's popular in the mod scene and you'll get a hit. It's actually surprising how little companies do this. I mean, it worked for Dota, it worked for Team Fortress 2, it worked for Battle Royale, it worked for Counter-Strike, and all the gaming companies are like, we should make a Fortnite or a Destiny clone. Suicide Squad. <laughs> Why? Money. But unfortunately, the lack of <laughs> next generation games is just the first problem. Because <sighs> these consoles make playing games kind of difficult. Dude, how is my timing that bad? How? <laughs> oh my god, guys. What if I went off at like like that? Like, how is my why is my parry? My parry! Why can't I parry? Oh my god, that would be oh my god. Why can't I parry? <laughs> so let's say you get a brand new console. Here's a simple question for you. What should it do? It sounds simple enough, right? You should play video. What? What? Mouse harder? Wow? together I think I just got some dust in my nose hell yeah let's play it yes <laughs> I'm I am unhinged today uh I wasn't prepared for this uh sorry uh nah, nah. well okay well new games of course but there's actually something else that I'm sure you'll remember after this Oh, the, the jingle! Game, you, then that just didn't work. But I if love you the did, jingle. It's just one example of the magical experience a console can actually give players. And in every one of your favorite consoles, you'll find a similar experience when you play it for the first time. Oh my time. god. But what about the Xbox Series X? Oh, it's uh it's just an Xbox One, but uh <laughs> I guess it's faster now. 600 Canadian dollars faster, I guess. And I guess my $600 wasn't enough to cover the ads either. Now, in fairness, when you boot the PlayStation 5, Sony says, hold my beer.
is like every <laughs> single PlayStation merged into one super PlayStation and I loved every second of it. But look what happens yeah. when I pop in an extremely expensive 90 Canadian dollar next generation physical game from this incredibly sad and empty plastic box into each console. Yeah, the game needs to install gigabytes of data or download larger and larger patches before you can hey, even Black, get a chance it? to play. So then you think to yourself, well, okay, I guess while I wait the mildly frustrating 30 minutes for this game to be ready, I could just, you know, play one of the digital games that I already own. But then you find out that when you do that, the network speeds of your consoles are dragged into the frozen depths of HE double hockey sticks. So then you think, fine, okay, all right, I'll just play another game today and take the hit on the network speed so I can play the new 90 Canadian dollar next generation physical game from this empty plastic box tomorrow. But then the game that you decide to play also has a 60 gig update because of course it does. So at this point, you're, you're basically dead inside. But because you're desperate to play anything during the two hours of time you have left before you have to go to sleep to your corporate soul-sucking 9 to 5 job, you decide to play the most depressing game of Russian Roulette to see which of the games you own doesn't need a 200 gig update until you almost assuredly give up and decide to watch someone else play games on YouTube or Twitch instead. And if that's your case, hello and welcome to the channel, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, at first glance, it seems like the console experience is objectively worse than those that came before. Oh, I but like this guy. If you're like I was, then don't worry because I decided to bust out my <clears throat> older consoles to put this hey Black, how are to you? the test. How are you doing? So, for the Xbox Series X, I found my original <laughs> Xbox from over 20 years ago. The idea is simple. On the original Xbox, I'm going to try to play Halo Combat Evolved, a 20-year-old game. Then on the Series X, I'll try to play Halo Infinite to see which console lets me play the game first. Well, that's depressing. But you might not be convinced. So I repeated this same exact test with the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 2. On the PS2, I'm gonna play Ratchet and Clank Going Commando. And on the PlayStation 5, I'll try Ratchet and Clank Ripped Apart. So this test was really interesting because even with 4K graphics, Insomniac somehow loaded Ratchet on the PS5 in almost half the time. But unfortunately, what you don't know is both of these consoles needed their games to be pre-installed ahead of time just so they could compete. Now remember, each of these consoles is playing a game that's pushing their Damn. hardware to the limit, but only the previous generations actually let me play the games immediately and yeah, I don't without even want to imagine what would happen if these newer consoles weren't connected to the internet like these things have way more power they have way faster hard drive speeds yep. and yet i can just play games faster over there because you see in the ninth generation the games are worse the play experience is worse and in the xbox series x's case it barely tries to do anything to trigger any form of nostalgia i mean who's launching the xbox series x 10 years from now being like oh man the jurassic world dominion ad on the front dashboard that i paid 600 canadian dollars for and a subscription to game pass and xbox live that's when gaming truly peaked ah oh, yeah the nostalgia <laughs> So, here's the question. If the modern gaming experience boils down to a list of games that are slightly better versions of the previous generation's games that constantly require downloading and or updating, then why not just play games on the PC where the games look and run so much better and I can actually do something else while I wait for my game to download. The truth is most people wouldn't, which is exactly why we're seeing a dramatic surge in the popularity for PC gaming instead of console gaming that was traditionally always the place to play games first. But there's actually one more reason why people are moving to PC away from the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, and it has to do with the way that these consoles treat people. Where's Teddy at? Where's Teddy? See, when it comes to video game consoles, there's actually two different eras of communication. The offline era, where you actually had to visit your friends, hang out, bring over a giant CRT TV, and the online era, where you have friends lists, parties, and wonderful messages awaiting you. Every single person who watches your videos are f***ing stupid. 
I'm actually nostalgic <laughs> for it. <laughs> but somehow the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 online community feels like an absolute ghost town where there's technically millions of people playing, but no one ever talks. Y'all feeling a good sense of community? Oh, bravo is off. Taking these own. <sighs> Why is he hitting every point of no one talks? and communicates anything at all. Like not even getting mad, you know? Like it's always, like if you do talk like, oh bro, you, you oh uh, well, uh, well, well. If you're a woman, you know, like, you know, you know the classic, <laughs> make me a sandwich, well. <laughs> How about you suck my, but uh that's a classic uh you get those all the time and then and then like you just you, or or they don't say anything like not like people not their scuff mics you know like talking in in the thing like <laughs> none of that anymore like not the heavy breathing it none of that man that that's what made online so much fun just talking shit while playing the game talking shit look closer <coughs> to your fellow man fellow spartan I mean, I okay. I don't talk. I don't talk like I would. I, I would totally talk. You know. I. I mean, I talk to you guys. Um, but like as an open mic thing, like if I was a one hundred percent a dude. Oh my god! What if I started talking like this? Now we talking. Just maybe I should do it like this. Yeah. 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 Maybe I'll be an open mic. You know? That one ear mic, yeah, you just hear on the left side or right side. Your team. I love it. So. Air Let's pitching. go back to 2007 yeah, to see just what the heck happened. <laughs> okay, it's 2007. 2007. And for some we talk about this broken, weird Canadian British accent. But that's just what 2007 was like. So, you want to play Halo 3 with your friends and your 360 hasn't Hell read. Yeah. What are you to do? <gasps> well, first, G4! you need a microphone. RIP. RIP G4. And thankfully, Microsoft graciously includes a pretty decent quality mic for the time with your Xbox 360. That means that anyone and everyone who has a 360 can communicate online right out the gate. So how do we go about communicating? Well, it is 2007, so communication software is... I'll be blunt, it's... it's terrible. Skype is probably the best out there, but us Canadians, well, we were using MSN Messenger. <laughs> Fortunately, we're in luck because sure, the communication software may have been total garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skype and call. But the software in these consoles were actually magnificent. Yeah. You see, it had friends list, a private party system that worked across any game, and like I mentioned before, some of the most wonderful voice messages yep. you could have ever hoped for. If I ever see you, I'm gonna fucking your face wide open, yeah? Like I said, 2007 was a different time. But what about the game itself? How did we communicate with the others? You see, by default, Halo and every other multiplayer game let anyone with a microphone communicate openly. Lobbies were active, parties were well indicated on screen with an icon, and proximity chat was always turned on by default. You don't need communication, That's how you just win. push! You don't need just communication. Push. Mind blowing, I know. Every single person you played with could be spoken to just like if we were playing sports in person. It was truly a community. But now let us forward back to the present day to see what the new consoles can do. Yikes. Okay, so it's 2024 and the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X have a few small differences. Despite being more expensive, the consoles no longer come with microphones. Next generation gaming! 
Sony technically provides one embedded in the controller itself, to be fair, but unless you play like a complete Those psychopath, were the days. it's probably not gonna gain mass adoption. Isn't it great that we can just talk right through this controller's mic? If I ever see you, I'm gonna fuck. You don't do that. Yeah, you don't do that. I don't. <sighs> Why is there a mic on a controller? People are playing. Oh, my chair is locked. People are playing like this. Not like this. Who plays like this? Guys, let's be innovative. Instead of giving them a mic, how about we just put it in the, in the controller? Corporate was like, head corporate was like, genius. Oh my God. Yeah. So we don't have to invest in the wiring from like the mic to the headphone at all, you know, because like if they really wanted a headphone, then they would just buy like the PlayStation headset. Who's buying a PlayStation headset? Like for real, for real. Who's buying a PlayStation headset? To go with their PlayStation. Nobody. You might as well just get you some turtled beaches. Let's just go 100% in it. Just get you some turtle beaches. At least that would come with a mic. <laughs> I mean, we all had one. They, was, Oh, man. What a time. What a time. Turtle beaches was the time to be alive. Now... Mm -hmm. Don't use them anymore. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's weird. Next comes the communication software, and it's pretty much the same as before. But while this sounds great on paper, it's actually pretty bad given that it's been over 15 years. You see, companies like Discord have streamlined the way players communicate, yep. and the consoles really haven't tried to keep up. The only yep. innovation I could think of was that the consoles did technically add Discord integration, but in fairness, using Discord on a PC or a phone still feels infinitely better than the watered down version we get on the Xbox Series X or PlayStation 4. Five. Like I just use my phone, or you know what I, you know what I probably do is I, I just go on the PC instead. But okay, <laughs> what, what about the games? How are they handling communication 15 years later? Well, let's use Halo again as an example to showcase the 15 years of innovation. And the reason I use Halo is because, quite frankly, Halo 2 and Halo 3 were revolutionary Dominated. for really promoting communication within games. Each Dominated. Of these games kind of push things forward. Proximity chat, done talking, talking, dude. On the pit game, done talking, dude. dude. Pre and post game lobbies that all kind of stemmed from the Halos. He's like, dude, it's like. Like 5 a.m. where you are, go to sleep, and I just replied with Halo 3. It no longer has <laughs> pre and post game lobbies and hasn't for over a decade. It no longer has proximity chat. It does, however, support text chat between console and PC crossplay. So that's cool. But they what? completely block all forms of written or spoken communication with the enemy team entirely. And unfortunately, every game seems to have seen that and decided that rather than figure out a system that works for different communication styles, yeah, it's just easier to block everything completely so no one gets hurt. What you just said. Yeah, like, what? Like, I think they just didn't want to work on that system. Like, they wanted to integrate it, but then, like, they couldn't... They were just like, ah, no, we don't need to do it. And then they just got lazy off of it. Is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Does it, it, doesn't Black Ops do that still? Like when you die? Like when someone kills you, you, have, you can be like, get better noob or something. Like within a certain span. Or is that Call of Duty? I don't know which one it is. If you played a game of basketball outside, but no one was allowed to talk to each other, and the only way you could talk to your team was to stop, pick up your phone, and then text them before someone hits you in the <laughs> face with a basketball. 
And that sounds like a weird analogy, but it's like legitimately true. <laughs> sure, I guess technically oh, it's no caught? one has okay. a chance for harassment in that case. What Thank did you, you say, punk? but it kind of loses a lot of the humanity in the process, don't you think? Look, I love video game consoles, their reveals, their launches, and what they do for the industry. Some form of connectivity is called Xbox 360. Right. So stick with 360, that's your message? Each one wow, defines a been specific in it for so part long. of my life, and I'm pretty sure it did Bill for you Gates guys, too. The honest truth is that the ninth generation consoles are just overpriced, poor gaming experiences, where the games are held back by less capable machines, corporate greed, and a censored online environment in a world where if I spend a couple extra hundred bucks, I get all of that and more on a PC. The market is basically being forced to go elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm afraid if these problems continue, video nah, game consoles we're getting, we getting know a PC. love will die slowly in a wasteland as nothing but a memory. Except, I don't think they have to. Because the magic of what made video game consoles so special to everyone <laughs> never truly left. It's always been there, just waiting for someone, anyone, to bring it back. To bring back games that aren't afraid to push the industry forward. I am your shield. I am your soul. To bring back experiences we'll never forget. Oh, uh, playing games like demos and to put in stores first, as a community. So cool. Oh, am I here? If you haven't left yet, I would advise that you sprint. For the PlayStation 2. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on. Spyro! It's just one big social gathering uniting people all over the world for, you know, love of games. Being in Walmart and just playing the demos? Hell yeah! <laughs> I am now, like I wasn't before, but like seeing this. But it's like, but like, okay. Uh, look, it's almost done. I hope you enjoyed the video. You're beautiful, you're goose-tastic, and as always, keep it cute. Hey, can anyone hear me? Stop talking through the controller. You're an absolute psychopath, and I despise you. Freak it. Okay, let me just say this, like, um, oh my god, I got Leo here, sir. Okay, let me just say that, like, also what made, like, consoles so cool, like, you had to call and pre-order. And then you had to wait in line to get a console. Everything, you, a lot of things are not in line anymore. It's literally, you buy it, and they'll ship it to your house, or you just pick it up, or whatever it is. Like, there's no waiting in line to get like a good seat or like even for movie theaters you could just buy your ticket and pick your seat and show up there's no nostalgia of going to the movie theaters at thursday and watching the 12 o'clock a.m showing and waiting outside and getting there early and waiting in line and to try to get a good seat when the seats are sold out, they're sold out. You got go, you gotta go home. So it's like the same thing with consoles. You you're not having that nostalgia of like waiting in line, talking to all those people in line, being excited, calling your friend, like I have a spot. Where you at? You were supposed to be here twenty minutes ago. Like where are you? Like having a jacket. Not nothing. Nothing. Nothing like that. It's, it's a completely different experience.
with consoles too. Like it's less of a community base. Like even when the PlayStation was sold out, it was hard to get one, but you had to you had to pre-order it. Like, oh, you just hear on the internet, oh, it's sold out, oh, that sucks. And then I guess the nostalgia or like the limitations between getting a PlayStation. <coughs> um, that whole nostalgia of like getting the first wave of PlayStations and then the chip shortage happened and then the graphics card shortage happened. So it just, you know, like, but hopefully there's like games that come out before they make another generation. But we have to see what what comes from that.